All right, so uh, we've targeted the body via a tag CSS selector, and we've targeted a specific div with a wrapper class. Well, to further start to define our, our project, we have this header. This top part here should be at the top, it should be centered, it should look like a nav bar. So we can start targeting those elements. Those elements exist in the code in the header. So we've got div and we've got header. We can start to target these elements. The thing about CSS that is very confusing and difficult for beginners is that what should the right selector be to target what I'm trying to affect? We've got the selector of body, and that's straightforward. It's everything. Then we've got the selector of wrapper, which used as a class right there. So then we've got header. We want to start to affect what's inside of the header. Um, depending on how it's structured in the HTML, it may be very straightforward or it may be complex. We can do this one pretty straightforward. We're going to say that in the header, we want to set a certain height and put a background picture in the header. So if that's the header tag after the end of the wrapper, selector. We've got a new selector of header. We could set it up as a new class and then do header class equals something. There's no wrong way to do this. I would say the wrong way is if it's too much typing or it's difficult to understand. Here's a much faster way to, and less to type and, and easier to understand. Anything in the header? Let's target it. So that's why we're just using simply the header selector. No dot. It's not a class. It's a tag. We're going to say the height of the header is 5m. Five units of height to display the text and the links. and then background. Now we've seen background-color, background-image, we have some other background-attachment. background, dash, background attachment. Well, all of these dash something background, those are the specific um, properties which we can say all as a shorthand here. So with simply background, we can define background color, comma, background image, comma, background alignment, comma. So here's a way, oh, if you spell it right also, uh, for you to target the, the background in many ways, more, more ways than one. I want to put a background color, uh, I want to put a background picture, and I want the picture to be faded. So we saw that when we had put the the stars, let me go back to a version right there. People love background colors, but people forget that background colors can make it very difficult to read the stuff on top of it. Background pictures. Because this background right now is dark. My text is dark. If I change my text to light colors, it'll look fine on a dark background. But this background have, have part, has parts that are dark, parts that are light, parts that are light. So I'm never going to pick the perfect color that's going to look good on the dark and the light areas. One way to counteract that is to fade out the background. So we're going to put a background behind the text up here and fade it out. We're going to put a faded color on top of a background, and all of that will be behind the text. So this one's tricky. This one's long. We're going to write linear dash gradient open close parentheses um, comma RGBA, parentheses, comma, mm -hmm. 
and then URL parentheses. Oh, actually, this goes. Um, parentheses goes here. You be careful here. Sorry. The um, linear gradient parentheses starts here, comma. We need to fill in some things. But I'm going to write it first. Parenthesis some stuff RGBA parenthesis then URL. This is sort of like how we had the font. Try this font, comma, try that font, comma, etc. At the end of that line, semicolon. We're first going to put a linear gradient. We're going to put a color that fades. And then a back and then a picture. The color that fades, the linear gradient in the first comma here, we'll write to space top. We can make these gradients be at different angles. Where do they go? This one goes to the top. We have to the bottom, to the left. We can have this fade happening in different directions. To top. RGBA. We looked at RGB, RGB previously, which was mixing colors. RGBA also includes alpha, which is transparency. So we can have red, but 50% visible. Our, inside the RGBA, we'll type 255, comma, 255, comma, 255, comma. Full red, full green, full blue, white. The A is alpha, the transparency, 0.75. Transparency goes between 0 and 1. 0 and 100 percent. This white color is 75 percent visible. So a little bit of a faded color on top of a picture. That will help prevent that the picture is fighting with the text on top of it. Right after that parenthesis, between the two parentheses, space 0%, comma, space, RGBA again, parentheses, we're saying we're putting a gradient. It's going to go to the top. It's going to start at this color and then it's going to go to this color. It's going to start from white and go elsewhere with 0% visibility of that white up to 100%. That's going to go again 255, 255, the same white color, the same alpha. This is why prime example, opening and closing these parentheses. This is very easy to lose track of where, where do these go. So notice right away I opened and closed them so that then I don't forget them. Between those parentheses, space 100%. This could very easily be to top, red, comma, blue. It's going to blend from red to blue to the top. Here we're doing it pretty complex. We are doing a white color to a white color, but from invisible to visible, 75% um, total visibility. It's pretty complex, but the trick will be that we will have this background color that looks uh, faded out. The background picture, that is. Inside of the URL in quotes, I've got a picture for us to use. HTTPS vmcinc.files.wordpress.com slash 2016 slash 10 slash squirrel girl dot png.
me confirm that my code looks right. There it is. So it's a pretty long line. I can't fully all show it. It's going to look a little jumbled. That's okay. We're getting to that. <coughs> But the idea is I wanted to put a background picture behind the text. If I didn't fade it out with the preceding there, that picture would be too visible and the text on top of it would be hard to read. If you run that, you should see the picture. It's not showing a very interesting part of the picture. We can align the picture, we can move the picture around a little bit. All of this is related to the, uh, the background. So after the address space no dash repeat space 0, space negative 190, px. I'm just going to repeat in a moment. So here, x and y. The picture currently gets placed in the background. And you barely see like the leg of a squirrel and an acorn. I want to move it up. There's the face of the character, squirrel girl. I want to move it up so to see the face. So that's this negative number here. I'm moving the picture up 190 pixels up to focus on the face of the character in that photo. So I moved it up. No repeat prevents it from repeating in that space. It was just there to contrast. No repeat. repeat. This address here is the same as the addresses we were using down there with a different character. Space repeat the picture. Space x coordinate leave it at 0. Y coordinate move the picture up 190. So it took some amount of figuring it out how much to move it, but it looks like 190 is a good amount because then what I get is the picture that repeats there and it focuses on the character. A moment ago it was showing a different part of it. without specifying that those coordinates, that's what I get out of that picture, not too interesting. With negative 190, it moved it up to see the character. This is a really big line. I can't zoom in to show both at the same time, unfortunately, but hopefully it worked there. These, um, this syntax, of course, is very specific in this case. This, all of this is inside, basically, we've got the linear gradient, one way to tell if you typed it right is if you click on the opening parenthesis, it should highlight red, and then its pair should highlight as well. So the first part of the code is the linear gradient. Linear gradient is to top, comma, starting color, RGB white, 0%, comma, ending color, RGB white, 100%. Ultimately, the white is still 75% visible there, comma, the picture. So here's how we can set a color. We do background, set a color, comma, set a picture. Instead of doing background dash color and background dash image. URL follows after that. We saw that syntax already. And then what was added after that, repeat the picture. 0 x coordinate, negative 190 y coordinate.
So all of that is to target the, the top header area. Uh, I want to further work on this because there's an empty spot up here that I want to fix. Yes? Let me go on just a little bit. It's probably going to be one simple little typo. Let me go on and then we'll have our lab and then I can help you with that. Um, this I would like to center the text and yes this the pictures at the the text the links at the moment sir, at the moment go off the edge of the of the area we'll fix that of course but let's say here going on in the header we next want to target the h1 inside of the header if we were to type h1, this would affect every h1 in the screen. I want specifically the h1 inside of header. Type header space h1. This is an h1 inside of a header tag. We're saying look for where there's the header, then space, look for where there's look for where there's an H1. No comma, no dash, no dot. In this case, a tag is inside of another tag. The H1 tag is inside of the header tag. Yes. Target to the tags, if possible, or then you would have to create classes or IDs, which we'll look at later. So header one, uh, H one here. We'll set this as a width of 100%, a height of 1.5m, margin of 0. That should get rid of that little space that's at the very top because it was empty. But then I want to add some padding, top, 1m. There's margin, there's padding, there's differences there um, for alignment and such. I'm going to say the color of the text up there, I want it to be orange, red. I want a different font family. I have been setting the Georgia serif font for everything but then I want a different font up on the heading 1. Only the heading 1 here will change its font family. This time I'm going to set it to Helvetica. If that doesn't, if that's not a, applicable on the person's computer, comma, Arial. If that one doesn't work, sans dash serif. Serif is a style like Times Roman. Sans serif is a style, a generic style like Arial. So if Helvetica doesn't exist on the person's computer and Arial doesn't exist, have the web browser or the device just choose any generic sans serif font. Save and run that. This should target the H1. font got changed. There's no more space at the top because we said margin, zero. But then there's still a little bit of leeway up there with padding. So margin is the space outside the element. Space outside the element. The box, the invisible box. Padding space inside the element. 
So we have these invisible boxes around everything. We started to manipulate background color to make it visible. We added a border to make it visible. Well, these elements, they have a padding and they have margin, some inherent built-in amount. That was that empty space at the very top that was annoying us. Well, by saying margin zero on all four sides, we canceled it out. So now the header element bumped up right to the top of the div. We canceled out margin, no space outside of the element. But I still wanted some space inside the element so that the text is not so close inside the element. That's padding. So in this room, for example, there's a room right next to us, and there's a wall with some amount of thickness. The thickness between rooms is the margin. So imagine a one-foot margin between this room and the next room. Padding would be if I had, you know, padded walls here. Right now there's zero padding here. My hand can go right up to it, but if there's a padded, if there's a padding here, my hand will touch it here. I'm not actually touching the wall. So padding, top or bottom or left or right, is the space inside the element, and the margin is the space between elements, this room and the next, this div and the next, this header and the other element. And that's how I can have, that's how I can eliminate this space up here and give me some space here so that the text is not right up against the edge of the header background. Like top right left uh, and it's like too close to the yes. left like if you do like four numbers it's gonna be going to be go away. We can do it on all four yes. The reason we haven't done it this way is we will automatically set it to center but we okay. could do all four sides if we wanted. I just want some space at the top and then automatically center the, the rest which comes up soon. What's the difference between outer and center? Because it seems like the outer is uh, center like usual. Center only applies on some things. If you have, for example, text align center, that works. But if you do text align auto, that doesn't work. Auto works with margin. Yeah. Margin auto will center it, but margin center doesn't work. Oh, it doesn't work? No. Can, okay. Center works on some things, auto works on other things. You can use both, basically. No, and if it doesn't work, try the other. So uh, here, font family, speaking of center, text align center. This text here, now automatically center at left and right margin, could have worked in a way, but here we've got the built-in text align center to automatically align that text. One more thing, then we'll wrap up and have some lab time to make sure we're all on the same page here. There we go, centered. And the last thing is um, we faded out that background color pretty well. If you further want to fade it out, you can play with these values here. If we put that like to 0 0.25, 0 0.25, you don't have to change this. I'm going to show you something else. But if we put that to, to smaller or bigger values, the opposite, I guess, you fade it out more. Uh, 0.9, 0.9, one, one way or the other, there we go, so even more faded out. So that's one way to do it, changing those. But what I want to do is also add, to further separate the text, what's one common way that you might have seen how text can be separated from its background? Drop shadow, a shadow, exactly. We can do shadows with CSS. In the old days, I would need to open up Photoshop, add a drop shadow, and save it here. But then, too much shadow, not enough shadow, I have to go back to Photoshop, change the shadow, save it again. With CSS, we can create shadows with just a couple of uh, sentences, a couple of lines, a command, and then we can easily change it. This is called text-shadow. If I'm designing a shadow in Photoshop or other graphic software, I move the shadow off to the edge a little bit and maybe change its color and other things. Well, with text shadow, 
we're dealing with that, the um, how much we move it over and what color. So if we do 2px space 2px space black semicolon, this moves the shadow to the right a little bit, down a little bit, and a black shadow. That is x offset, y offset, color. So now that's standing out a bit more. That's uh, moved over to the right two, moved over to the bottom two. If I wanted to move to the shadow to the left, what do you think you do? Minus two. Positive value of x moves it to the right. Negative value of x moves it to the left. I'll put 12, just to be very obvious. Negative 12. Moved it a lot to the left. Well, positive values of y, the second value, move it down, which is opposite of what we're used to. So positive 2 moved it down. Negative 2 would move it up. Uh, shadow is up. 0 is right on the center of it, so a negative number is up and a positive number is down. 0 is right on top, so a positive value x to the right, negative value to the left. And then color. I just chose a color. We could do RGB and RGBA transparency. We do RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0 0.5. So it's black, 0, 0, 0, but then it's 50% black some transparency to see behind it. RGB would have been solid. RGBA was, was with some transparency from 0 to 1. 0 0.25 is a quarter percent visible. 1 is fully visible. That's black, but I can see through it a bit behind it. I can play with that. I'll put it on one. That's the same as just putting black. Both are the same way, doing RGBA this way or writing black. Again, right or wrong answer, basically it's for you to decide. One way that I would say is what's less typing, what's less, what's less to make a mistake of. Just writing black works. Some people would want the hexadecimal value. Great, that works. Do you want the six digits hex or the three digit hex? They both work. They're both valid. In my case, I would just want it pure black, so I didn't need to do RGBA, but that's uh, for your information. Still plenty to do, but we'll pause at this point so we can do some lab time and such. I'm going to take general questions of things we talked about. I'm going to put a copy of my work into the network folder, and I'll remind you where that is in a moment, so you can check my code against yours, and then I'll take questions until 9.30 individual. But any general questions on things we talked about today? Yes? This can be anything you want. It's common to use wrapper because div right now has wrapped around everything. People sometimes call it main because it's main content. So there's no hard convention people to use. Wrapper is a common one. Basically, whatever makes sense for you or your team that you're working with is the right, is the right name. Um, you can use simple words or longer phrases. It's pretty open. Another question? Someone else? Yes. Mm-hmm. We will. That's going to come a little bit later. That's called a fav icon, and we will write a line of code that then dis will help us display 
uh, a picture up at the top here, eventually, yeah. All right, let me, s uh, yes? Um, Why, a uh, reason I put what? Oh yes, uh, wrapper is because it's a class. There's no tag called wrapper, right? Tags are just have angle brackets. There's no tag called wrapper. What we did was we used the generic div, an invisible plain container. We gave it a unique name, class. And therefore, to identify <coughs> classes in the CSS, it needs a dot. Uh, is there a reason to capitalize the uh, font family? Is there something that happens? Font family, the names of the fonts, those are... Um, official names of the font. I think it would work without capitals, let me confirm that, but the names of those files are capital, seems to have worked, so either or, it's just that uh, these are like proper names, so we did capitals on that. And sans serif is generically any font that's kind of like Arial, so it's not a proper name, so it's lowercase. Let me save my work up to this point into the network. Yes? So you're also saying that they don't have a font family or do they? I can put a URL for the new and then they yes. the font? We will do that. If you want to start to preview what that is, you can look up at font face. It's, we'll do it eventually, but if you want to look up at font face, that's how we can put a, a font that is not on their computer. This code, I will put it into the network folder. I will uh, put today's date onto it. And when we work on it again next time, I'll put a new date on it. But I'll give you the code up to this point so you can compare what you've done with what I've done. And if it's slightly off, we can check that. And then I'll do one on one help in a moment. Let me just set this up. So I ask we not print while the lecture is still kind of going on, but I'll put that over here. The network folder is, uh, if you open the computer window, you go to the classroom data. Inside of network location, classroom data, drive Z as in zebra, double click that. Scroll down to find our class, which is Campos Mobile Apps 1. And what I did, Marvel with today's date, .html, there's my code. You're free to copy that to your flash drive or your desktop or print it in a moment when I'm done talking. And then you can compare my code with your code if you want and uh, see any differences. So at this point, we'll wrap up, we'll have some lab time, and we'll do it again on Thursday.